hello and welcome back and today we want to look at the noise generated from WD Red Plus hard drives. That's right, this is another video in our series where we look at the noise generated from NAS and data center class drives. But bearing in mind there are of course some disclaimers just like my other videos and although you may have heard this before and might want to skip forward a couple of minutes just in case there's a few things to bear in mind. First and foremost we are utilizing a NAS drive, but we're using it on its own via USB. So bear in mind that the noise generated and indeed the performance is indicative of a single hard drive, not one in a large RAID array. Also bear in mind that we are utilizing a three mic setup. The reason being is there's lots of different channels of audio in today's video. Audio number one, obviously what I'm talking to you now. The next one is a microphone here at the top of the screen where we're using that to record the actual noise generated from these drives. So the clicks, hums and whirs and spins and the platters, so you can hear them audibly. The reason is that if you do have a RAID array and you've got a bunch of drives inside, you will generally find that the noise becomes more and more amplified with more discs. So in order to replicate that as much as possible without using a whole NAS with its fans and its own kind of physical attributes that would be very difficult to do a like-for-like -like comparison, we are using a single USB external dock, which will still give us five gigabits per second, and although this is a SATA six gig drive, it will no way saturate that full connection. Also, the Sabrant uh, USB 3 dock that we're utilizing in the phone package, uh, the phone container here, that will, uh, it has no internal fan, generates almost no electronic noise. And lastly, we have an additional microphone that's working with our DB monitor on the side of the screen. Now bear in mind, this is not some multi-thousand pound DB adapter and noise recognition tool there. We are going for something where we can get practical on-screen uh, results. But of course, it's only going to be sensitive, sensitive down to about 25-30 dB. So even if we are super quiet in this room, it's still registered the following. So again, in those early 20s, 20 to 25, which although if we go into the monitor shows us that it is still classed as a quiet room, that's not going to be enough to identify this drive. So consequently, we need to recalibrate this and we're going to minus 25. The reason we minus 25 is because we want to be able to distinguish the drive noises over everything else. So once we do that and listen again, All we're picking up then is background electronic noise. Likely, you're going to be picking it up there in the background of the other devices. And on my recording machine, around about, ooh, from the other mic, around about 60, 65 centimeters away. So what we're gonna do is load this drive in in a moment, but just to let you know about the noise that's being generated by the external casing, to make sure you know that's not part of this, let's go ahead and turn this on. And if we're quiet, short of the bus that's going past the window, which we're just going to let that go by. We've now got that general background level. This video is going to have a lot of silence. I do apologize in advance of me looking bored, but you're just going to kind of have to deal with it. Lastly, we have already set this drive up as an external drive. We've already set this up using Dispart. We've completely formatted this drive. There's some other recordings uh, from earlier. But if we go into my PC here, we can see those two drives there. We've not connected it yet. That's an internal SSD we're using for the testing. We've already formatted this drive and a bunch of other drives already prior to this recording. So now we know the noise that the adapter makes when a drive uh, isn't inside. Let's turn it off and let's load in our WD Red Plus drive. This is the WD40 EFZX. This is not um, a part of the DSN, uh, DMR, um, sorry, uh, SMR series. This is a CMR drive, conventional magnetic recording. So let's load that in there. We've got that done. So once again, we'll let that boot. And what we're gonna do now is listen out for this device. So let's go ahead and start.
So a nice gentle spin up there of that drive. Now it's worth highlighting, obviously this is not a Pro Series class drive. This is designed for NAS arrays of up to eight bays. We've looked at a lot of Enterprise big old class drives already. Some Exos, we've looked at some Pros, we've looked at some Ultrastar. This is more common garden and hopefully from this we're going to be able to see a lot of those noise differences between the big drives and the small drive. Also being 4TB, we've got less platters to deal with. So hopefully this should be a relatively quiet drive. So if we go into um, this PC, we can see that that volume has appeared, that 4TB drive. So the first thing we want to do is open up Black Magic, Black, uh, not Black Magic, AJA. And AJA, we're going to run a 4 gigabyte test file, and it's going to be a repeating read-write activity one after the other. Why is that important? Because um, this isn't going to be atypical of a NAS drive. This is not going to be a balanced read-write switch. This is going to be write on its own, and then read on its own. So the two things we want to take from this test. One, we want to see the performance. Obviously, it's a single drive rather than a large rate array, so you're not going to see enormous speeds, but you're going to see speeds between 150 and 200 odd. The second thing we want to keep an eye open for is the switch between the write and the read, and then back to the write. Because enterprise class hard drives, you definitely notice the difference when it's flicking between them. And ultimately, a lot of the time, as it's flicking through the platters to retrieve and start um, applying uh, magnetic data, the result is that's where a lot of the clicks and hums and whirs are um, kind of actioned by. So in the case of this drive, it should be a lot more gentle. So what we're gonna do is click start, and then I'm gonna be quiet for a little period of time so we can notice those small changes and go. So the performance there for those that caught my PMR versus DM SMR will notice those speeds aren't quite up there with those larger cache drives. This is a 64 meg cache drive. Let's listen for the change. Barely noticeable, even to the naked ear or to having the microphone there, we've barely picked that up. You can see that the write and read speed there definitely are less than the Pro Series and Enterprise class drives that we've looked at, and that's a big deal about the difference between the architecture of those drives. Let's listen. And again, barely noticeable at all in the change between them there. Now that speed is fairly standard for a standard class WD Red drive. This is not an Enterprise class drive, and it is a 5400 RPM drive at that. But what we're gonna do now, is just stop that test and now we're going to make our way into a windows drop test and this will be ever so slightly different this is going to be rather than um the testing we saw before this is going to be a nice um blob of data but in fragmented parts so as you can see we've got about 200 actually let's get the whole thing in there open that up we've got 186 there but of course there is other data as well if we come out of it there we can see 241 gig total with the system files because it is a recovery disk. And what we're going to do is paste this into this drive. We're going to create a brand new folder. And from here, we're then going to copy this data in. So once again, this is going to be a heavy write action, let's be honest. But it's worth highlighting that this is slightly different to the way AJA work. And then after this, we're going to do um, a heavy simultaneous read-write action from within the disk. This is from an SSD, uh, a SATA SSD onto this SATA hard drive. So let's paste that in now. It's gonna ask for permission because of the system data. We're gonna go ahead and let it begin now. So again, a very, very quiet drive there. You can pick out the activity of the arm inside, just moving across the platters, 
but it's nowhere near as aggressive as some of the Pro Series drives we've seen. Obviously, the downfall has been that performance drop. Some of the drives we've looked at in recent weeks have been to 250 megabytes per second performance, whereas now we're seeing with the exact same data, this performance living at that 100 to about 140 or so maxing out performance in terms of write. So we're just gonna let it run for a little bit longer. We wanna have at least 10 to 12 gig of data on there for when we do the simultaneous read write action. We're just gonna let it run for a little longer and keep our ears open. Okay, we've reached 5% complete there. That should be fine. We've done that enough. So now we have some data in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy that data. And this time, we're going to create a brand new folder within the same hard disk. Now, before we proceed, it's worth highlighting that for those that aren't aware, hard drives are not designed for intense read-write action within the same disk. You will always see very poor performance compared with that of a single drive working with an external. Where these drives really live, however, is when you have them in those RAID arrays that have multiple drives working together, so read and write can be balanced quite well. In fact, read and write happens very, very often, even with standard activity due to the redundancy uh, creation and the parity data that a RAID will factor. So when we do this operation, we aren't really looking at performance. We will, of course, give it a little bit of a look, but what we're really looking for is the audio. We want to see the noises, the clicks, hums, and words it generates, and particularly when compared to some of those drives that we've tested in previous videos. So let's go ahead and now do a paste action of this exact same data from within the same disk ecostructure. So we've immediately seen that performance dip that we talked about earlier on, and we're hitting straight down to 50, 60 megs, give or take. And we're also hearing the drive a lot more, trying to balance that activity. Let's listen again. And again, that is the only time you're really going to hear that drive. And even hearing it there, it is barely a fraction of what we saw those Pro Series drives making that switch due to the enterprise nature of their internal hardware. And once again, I do think, just like in my other videos, it's worth us looking at just how much that noise, you know, is comparable to a room without it happening. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to abruptly cancel the operation and disconnect the drive. And again, I am aware what I'm doing is an unsafe thing, so don't try this with your data, you might damage it. But this is to give you some idea of relativity of the background noise versus the drive itself. So I'm gonna cancel this and then immediately disconnect and turn off that drive. So three, two, one. And straight away, we've immediately seen that change there in the background audio there. So again, after hearing the drive for so long, chances are you didn't really realize how much of the spinning platters you could hear in the background of this video. So we're going to spin this back up, and then we're going to wrap things up on this WD Red Plus hard drive. So let's go. So 
Still, nevertheless, a relatively whisper quiet boot up there. Quite impressive indeed. Um, but this has been our audio and performance testing of the WD Red Plus 4TB drive. Now, of course, we are looking at other drives and we will be looking at the difference between pro and non pro drives in audio, not just with WD but Seagate as well. And of course, those Synology hard drives as they arrive with us here in the studio. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do let me know in the comments and click like so I know whether to continue with this series. Click subscribe if you want to be kept abreast of all the different drives we're testing. We're up to about 18 drives now. So all of them, as they will become live, will be able to make more comparative noise data between them. And of course, the more I see activity on these, the more I'll more likely buy a much more enterprise level setup for this audio testing. I could have put these inside a NAS. I'm sure a number of you in the comments will say that. But if you introduce a NAS into this environment, it does make it difficult to eliminate all the other external factors. Even if you use the same NAS, what you end up with in a fully populated device You've got to get the right activity and make sure you have a parity of setup. Something I will work on, but for now, we're going to go with a single drive setup and moving in later into a RAID multi-bay performance benchmark. But otherwise, I will see you next time.